Welcome to our next video. We're talking about money market equilibrium. We've been talking about money supply. We've been talking about the demand for money. We now need to take a look at the interaction of both of market of money supply and of the demand for money. This is the demand for money, the blue line, and it is going down, which means there, there is a negative correlation between the interest rate on the one hand and the demand for real money, because interest rate is the opportunity cost for money. If the interest rate goes up, there is a higher incentive to put money on your bank account. There is a smaller incentive to have money with you, to have currency with you in your pocket. So there's a negative correlation between the interest rate and the demand for real money. There is no negative correlation, there is no correlation at all, to put it this way, between the interest rate and the supply of money. So the supply of money is, to put it in microeconomic terms, is totally inelastic when it comes to the interest rate. Because the interest rate rises or goes down, there is no change at all in the supply with the supply of money. So the supply of money goes just this way. And of course, there is an equilibrium. There is an equilibrium interest rate. So what you need to understand is the movements, are the two movements. If there is an excess demand for money or if there is an excess supply for money of money. Let's take a look at this first, at the excess demand. And let's take a look at the value of bonds. We just have two positions. We have money and we have bonds. There is no other thing than just having those types of wealth. There is the only types of wealth, money and bonds. The only things you can have. No different things are allowed here. No houses, no cars, no anything. No nothing. Okay, the value of bonds. If you get an interest payment, and it's a bond that lasts eternally, if you get interest payment of, say, 50 euros, 50 dollars a year, and the interest rate is 10%, what's the value of the bond? I repeat it. Say, I give you 50 dollars a year, each year, from now on, eternally. In one year, in two years, in three years, in four years, and so on, and so on. Let's just suppose I do it eternally. We're not going to live forever, but let's just suppose we, we did. So what's the value? What's the value if I gave you $50 a year with an interest rate of 10%, what would you be willing to give me right now? Right now. Suppose. Give me your answer now. What are you willing to give me for this promise? I can hear, I don't hear you. Right, the answer is 50 divided by 0.1. Because if we have a, an interest rate of 10%, the $50 payments, the $50 payment per year needs to be divided by 0.1, which is 50 divided by 0.1 equals 500. So if you gave me $500 right now, I would put the $500 on my bank account, earning 10% a year, which means 10% multiplied by 500 equals 50. The bank would give me $50, I'd give the $50 right to you, and the next thing is going to happen, the same thing is going to happen one year from now, there is still a deposit of $500 on my bank account. I give you again, the bank hands. 500 times 0.1 equaling $50 to me, I give the $50 right to you, and so on and so on, eternally. There is not going to be a decrease in the amount of money, there is not going to be an increase of the amount of money. So it's always $50 per year, now and forever. So that's the important equation concerning the value of bonds. What's interesting to see is that the value of bond, the price of a bond, and the interest rate correlate this way. So if the interest rate goes up, the value of a bond goes down. If the interest rate goes down, the value of the bond will go up. There's a negative correlation between the two. So, again, the excess demand, if there is an excess demand for money, if the blue line 
lies above the red line when it comes to the amount of money. We have an excess demand for money, so what do people want to do with an excess demand? With an excess wish to have currency in your pocket, what do people do? They only have the possibility of having bonds and of having money. So if they need extra money, if they want to have extra money, they will sell their bonds because they, if they sold them, they would get extra amount of money. That's important. So with an extra demand for money, people would sell bonds. People would sell bonds to get extra money. And with doing so, with selling a good, be it a cup of tea or water or cows or just bonds here, with selling a good, the value, the price of that good will always go down. Exactly. It's going to go down. You're right. You just wanted to say so. The value of the good of the bond will go down. And if the value of the good of the bond goes down, which means the interest rate goes up. Or to be more precise on that, if the interest rate goes up, the value of the bond, the price of the bond goes down because of the negative correlation between the interest rate and the value of the bond. Which means, all in all, an excess demand for money causes people to sell bonds, causes the interest rate to go up. And that's what I just wanted to say from here to there. Interest rate will go up because of an excess demand. And as long as there is an excess demand for money, the interest rate is going to rise. Until the very end, until the very point of equilibrium, if there is when, if and when there is no longer an excess demand for money, so here in this situation we don't have any more um, excess demand for money. And the opposite just holds true here, excess supply for money and the interest rate is going to go down. What did we learn in this video? We've been talking about the demand for money, the supply of money. We've been talking about the equilibrium interest rate. We've been talking about what happens if there is an excess demand and an excess supply of money. The interest rate will go up with an excess demand and will go down with an excess supply of money. Very important to understand, very important to know until next video.